Well, hello, my friends, and welcome once again to Declaring Liberty. I am your host, Mark Romano, and today is Monday, September 13th. I hope you all are doing well. Here's what I want to talk about today. There are a few points about the constitutionality of vaccine mandates, as we talked about last time, but I've seen a few comments uh, having to do with that issue that I want to address, so we're going to correct the record about some of that. And then I want to take a little bit of time and talk about some of the crazy in the Republican Party. Unfortunately, this is going to be an ongoing topic here on Declaring Liberty. I say unfortunately because it is deeply unfortunate, um, deeply unfortunate for the country, that the Republican Party has and continues to devolve into a, a mindless personality cult. Uh, it's, just, it's just sick what's happened to this party. And uh, it's, it's deeply unfortunate for the country. And, and so we're going to talk about it because we have to. Uh, in my opinion, the lunatic radicalization of the Republican Party is one of the greatest threats to the country going forward. And, and I don't say that uh, as any sort of hyperbole. I mean it quite literally. And so it will be an ongoing topic of discussion here on the podcast. Okay, now let's begin with the vaccine thing. I'm not going to rehash everything I said last time. If you want to get a good understanding about the constitutionality and legal basis of vaccine mandates, uh, go ahead and listen to episode one of the show, and uh, I cover that pretty extensively. Today I just want to address some points that I've seen made um, just so that we're all on the same page and, and um, I can clarify the constitutionality of all of this. Now, several people have commented to me that um, to them it is noteworthy and uh, a demonstration of the corruption of the federal government, and here the Biden administration in particular, that Congress was exempted from Biden's vaccine mandate order. As you know, there's two orders coming from uh, the Biden administration regarding these vaccine mandates, and they have dif different constitutional um, foundations, as I talked about last time. There is the order that all federal employees of the executive branch uh, be required to get the vaccine. And then there's the second order. Now, that order, by the way, that order regarding the executive branch, that order has already been made. The other order we are still waiting for. He's announced that he, he, will, he will be making this order, but he, as of now, he has not yet done so. And that order has to do with requiring uh, vaccines for anyone who works in a private company with 100 or more employees. Now, the, the constitutional basis of that is different. That is reliant upon a statute. Here, we're dealing with the OSHA statute. But again, that order has not yet been made. So I don't really want to talk about it any more specifically until that order comes out. But we do know that it's going to be based on statutory law. Now, as for Biden's first order dealing with the federal government, it only applies to members of the executive branch and does not apply to members of Congress and the judiciary. Now, some people were angry about that in, in some of the comments I've read, uh, saying, that, see, this is how they, you know, exempting Congress, this is how they cover themselves. There's one set of rules for, for all of us, and then there's, an, there's another set of rules for, for the rest of them. You know, and, and most of the people who work in the executive branch who are impacted by this vaccine mandate, they're just regular people who have a government job, right? And so they're just the little put upon people. And Congress, members of Congress and the judges, they're all exempted from this. And this just shows the corruption of the federal government. And it's, it's one rule for them, one rule for us. Well, I understand that sentiment. And there's a lot of reason for people to have developed that sentiment over time. Because we do see this over and over with laws coming out of Congress where they pass laws that affect the rest of us, but they specifically exempt themselves in those laws. This is not an example of that. The reason, there, there's a very good reason why Joe Biden's order to federal employees does not um, include 
members of Congress or members of the judiciary. And I mentioned this previously, but I want to highlight this. Biden's order only applies to the executive branch because he controls the executive branch. This is a separation of powers issue. As I told you, the two issues have different constitutional foundations. The order to federal employees comes from, uh, this is based on Biden's inherent Article II authorities. This is inherent to the office of the president. This is a constitutional power that he has. He has the power under the Constitution to require certain conditions in order to work for him in his executive branch. Remember, the President of the United States is the executive branch. This is the idea of the unitary executive that some people, you know, they don't like to hear. But it's true. Uh, that is what the Constitution sets up. Article 2 of the Constitution begins this way. The executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. Boom. That is the unitary executive. Right there, whether you like it or not. All executive power is vested in one branch of government. And that one branch of government is the president. So you'll hear a lot of people, for example, um, say that the Department of Justice is separate from the president. And the president shouldn't have any authority over, over how the Department of Justice operates. Now, you can, you can advocate that a president should have a hands-off approach and just sort of let the DOJ uh, do its thing without much interference from him. But constitutionally speaking, the president can get as involved in the Department of Justice operations as he wants to. Because the Department of Justice is him. It is a department within the executive branch, and he is the executive branch. Every single person, every department, every cabinet official, every sub-cabinet official, every single person who works for the executive branch is, is exercising the president's delegated authority, authority, essentially. The president can't do everything himself. That's why he has to have people who work for him to help him you know, exercise his constitutional authorities. One guy can't do it all. So you have to have uh, cabinets and cabinet secretaries and sub-cabinet secretaries and all these kinds of things. And you have to have employees who actually do the work. But they are all exercising the president's authority. All authority is invested in, in, the, uh, in that one guy. That's the unitary executive. A lot of people don't like it, but that's just the way it is. And as such, the president has a great deal of authority uh, when it comes to setting conditions uh, on the people who work for him in his executive branch. And the vaccine mandate for, for members of the executive branch, you know, falls within his authority to do. I mean, he can do it. Uh, he can't force anyone in the executive branch to get the mandate, but he can certainly make it a condition of employment and fire them if they don't. But um, so anyways, clearly he has this authority, this inherent constitutional Article II authority. And this is why his order does not apply to uh, the legislative branch or the judicial branch because of separation of powers, because the president has no authority over the legislative branch. He has no authority over the judicial branch. They are three separate branches of government. And they have no authority over one another. They can't tell each other what to do, except insofar as there are explicit checks in the Constitution, one branch being able to do certain things to, quote unquote, check the power of other branches. And other than that, uh, one branch has no authority over the other branch. And here the president has absolutely no authority uh, under Article 2 of the Constitution to require that members of the other two branches um, get a vaccine. He has no authority to do that, and that's why it applies only to the executive branch. Now, as I said, we're still waiting for this other order from Biden that uh, will apply to businesses in the private sector with 100 or more employees. And, and as I've said, that's um, going to be based on different authorities that he as president has. This will be based on statutory authority under OSHA 
which uh, regulates workplace safety. So again, I don't want to get too much in the weeds on any of that until we see the actual language of the order and um, know for sure which section of statute they're relying on. So, But I do want to make a general point about businesses and the vaccine. Uh, because some of the commentary I've seen is that, you know, the business community is going to hate Biden now because, you know, he's telling them what they have. He's, he's giving mandates that affect them and telling businesses what to do in that regard. He's going to be putting himself, his, himself in direct opposition to the business community. Um, sure, there'll, there'll be some of that. But a lot of employers, especially, you know, in corporate America, uh, they're in favor of this. Uh, even if they don't come out and say it, they are absolutely in favor of this. Because here's the deal. Business, they're in the business to make money. They're in the business of business, right? They care about the bottom line. They care about customers. They care about profit. They care about money. That's the nature of business. It's not a knock. It is what it is. And they want, by and large, they want people to be vaccinated. They want uh, the people who work for them to be vaccinated, and they want their customers to be vaccinated because they want as safe a workplace as possible so that they don't have people who are out sick, so that they don't have increased health costs that they got to pay for. And they want as many customers as possible. So they want customers to know that their employees are vaccinated. So that when a, a, a customer comes into their place of business, those customers will know that the employees there are vaccinated. So this is going to be supported broadly by the business community. Not everyone in the business community uh, will support this, surely. But I think most will even if they don't come out and say it, even if they just support it quietly. And here's the other reason. Like I said, a lot of businesses want their employees to be vaccinated. And many have already made it a condition of employment that their employees get vaccinated. But others haven't, even though they want to. And they haven't because they fear, you know, people will make a, you know, they'd have a, a problem on their hands with their employees who are against the vaccine and they just don't want to deal with the headache. Um, so they haven't taken that step to require it of their employees yet. But an order from the president requiring vaccines for their business, that lets them off the hook. They don't have to, um, they don't have to make that decision themselves. And they can use the president's order as the perfect excuse. Look, we wanted to do this anyway, but we, we didn't have the guts to do it because we'd have a lot of uh, pissed off employees. So now the president's making us and we can just, you know, we can just say, hey, it's not our fault. The president's making us do it, even though quietly they're happy about it. So I don't know. I just wanted to point that out um, because the business community, I guarantee you, by and large, they're supportive of this, especially uh you know, corporate America is is in support of this. And uh, one more comment related to to these um, vaccine mandates. Um, you know, there's a lot of people. So much of our politics is performative, even. And I'm not even just talking about the people who are in politics because of social media. You know, the most passionate people the most passionate voters, the mo the people who are most into politics, nearly all of them are on social media, one platform or another. And because they can go on their platform or platforms and, uh, you know, give their political opinion, they're now, you know, they consider themselves more of a part of our politics. Uh, and, and having followers and gaining as many followers as they can, that's the goal. And so, so much of what people say is performative. Uh, they take positions so that they can appeal to people on social media. You know, just like conservative ink media does. You know, like for example, everyone at Fox News is vaccinated, yet every night they go out there and they, they, they you know, they, they, they propagandize against the vaccines and they spread all kinds of misinformation about the constitutionality of vaccine mandates and, and on and on and on. They're constantly, it's a game. It's a performance. 
You know, it, it's it's not principle. If it were principle, these people would have quit when Fox News made it a condition of employment that they get vaccinated. They'd all have quit, but they didn't quit. Tucker Carlson didn't quit. Sean Hannity didn't quit. No, they took their vaccines and then they go on and they tell the people in their audiences what they want to hear. So they take the vaccine and then they go and they rail against the vaccine. Um, and there's, it's not just with regard to vaccine. I mean, this you can go down in the issues. This is just this is how conservative Inc. operates. You know, what they're telling you is not necessarily what these freaking people believe or how they live uh, when they're not on camera or behind a microphone. It's a game. Uh, they're telling their audiences what they want to hear. So many people on social media, regular voters, do the exact same thing because th- they have audiences. You know, they have a, a, a group of followers, people who follow them on Twitter or Facebook or wherever, and they're playing to that audience. And one of the things that, you know, Republican voters do now is to talk super tough, right? Um, they're all freedom fighters and patriots, and they're all going to take up arms against the tyrannical federal government. Well, that's all just play acting. Almost all of them are full of shit. Now, some of them would, you know, some of them actually do attack their government and a lot of them are headed off to prison after attacking the Capitol on January 6th. But most people don't. Most people wouldn't. They just talk tough on social media. And that's a lot of what's going on with respect to the vaccines. Now, don't get me wrong. There are many people, probably many of you in this audience, who are opposed to the vaccine for whatever reason and you don't want to take it. And that's fine. Each person has to make that decision for themselves. And I will never say otherwise. And so I know that for some people, um, when they say they're not going to take the vaccine, they would quit their job over it. I know there's many people for whom that's true. It's a matter of principle and personal decision, uh, personal choice for them. And they're serious about it when they say... I will not take this vaccine no matter what my employer says. And, I, you know, if he wants to fire me, they can fire me. Yeah, there are some people that I absolutely believe are, are true to that. But most people are not. Most, most people are not. Most people who are, you know, running around on Facebook and Twitter saying, I will not comply. I will fight this tyranny, blah, 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 blah. They're full of shit. They will do no such thing. Uh, and, and, and I guarantee you many of those people who are saying that are vaccinated. They're, they're so full. That's how full of shit a lot of these people are. I bet you some of them, a lot of them are vaccinated yet spend all day on Twitter um, railing against vaccines and saying how they, they will not comply. You know, ju- they're just pulling a Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity job, right? They say one thing to their audience. And yeah, they don't get paid to cater to this audience, but... It, There's so much psychology wrapped up in today's politics, given social media, you know, and everyone thinks they have this audience and this audience gives them, you know, their, their follower count, uh, equates to their own personal self-worth for a lot of these people and getting as high a follower count as possible means they're a more important person. And the way that you get a high follower count in Republican circles now is to, you know, say this kind of thing. Even if you don't mean it, even if the people who are eating it up in your audience don't really mean it. This is, again, this is all performative. Well, not all. Again, you know, I'm painting with too broad of a brush here. But for much of these people, it's performative. This is play acting. This is a role they're all playing. It's all a fucking game to so many people in politics today. And I'm talking about voters. It's all a game to so many of these people. And when it comes to this, uh, I will not comply. I will not get the vaccine no matter what my employer says. I guarantee you most of them uh, will get the vaccine. If their employer comes to them and says you can either get the vaccine or get fired, most of them are going to get the vaccine. And here's the other thing, too. Remember, um, we haven't seen the order yet, but as the president announced, even people who work for these companies don't have to get the vaccine. There is an opt out. You can either get the vaccine or you can submit to weekly COVID testing. So you could still not get the vaccine and keep your job. You have to submit to, you just have to submit to weekly testing. Now, even if they made, even if they got rid of that and you you had to get the vaccine, I'm telling you, so many of these people, 
And I would bet a an overwhelming majority of these people who are saying I will not comply and doing their little performance art on Twitter and Facebook and whatever, they they absolutely will comply. When it comes to a choice uh, between either a paycheck or standing on your principal, uh, most of them will abandon their principal and take that paycheck. Most of every single time and it won't, it won't even be a close call. And here's the other thing too. Because most of them know they're not really scared of getting the vaccine. They don't believe in any of the ridiculous conspiracies that they promulgate on Twitter all day. Most of them. Now, there's crazies who do believe it. Uh, there are crazies out there who believe that the government's really implanted little microchips in this vaccine as a way to track people and all that kind of garbage. There's there's lunatics like that who believe that kind of stuff. People like uh, Lynn Wood. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he believes that kind of stuff. He's such a friggin' nut. Uh, but there's a, so there's plenty of them out there, but not all of them. Most of these people know that this conspiracy spreading crap is just all garbage, and and they they're not really worried about the health concerns of taking the vaccine. Now again, some people are. Some people may have serious objections uh, to taking a vac taking this vaccine or vaccines in general. Um, they don't they don't trust. The science, they don't think there's been enough long-term study of this issue, especially with respect to this vaccine. And I get it. And those are valid reasons. And if, and there are people who, who truly hold those positions. And that's fine. I'm just saying that, that many of these people um, who are doing the performance art stuff, they're not even worried about that. The only reason they're doing it is because that is what today's politics and the tribe that they are a member of is insisting that they do when they say. This is much more a product of group psychology uh, than it is anything else. And that's true of pretty much the entire Trump cult, really, for lack of a better term, and, and there really is no better term than what we're seeing now, the support of Donald Trump. But anyone who still supports Donald Trump at this point, after everything you know, uh, this is not the result of thought. This is a cult. This is a psychological phenomenon. It's not a political movement. It's a psychological phenomenon, first and foremost, um, that's attached sort of loosely to a political movement. The reason why I say it's not really a political movement is because movements usually, political movements usually seek to advance some sort of policy goal. Uh, the Trump cult does not. There is no coherent set of you know, political principles or policies that these people want to see implemented. Um, because they change one, one day to, to the next. Most of these people have, have already completely abandoned uh, principles they claim to have less than a year ago. So it, it, they're wedded to no principle. Principle does not guide anything these people do and say. It's group psychology. Um, it, it's us against them. It's owning the libs. You know, so it, it, Biden could probably lead these people by the nose to do whatever he wants them to do um, by just taking the opposite position of whatever it is he wants them to do. Uh, because they're, the way they operate is just to instinctively take the opposite position of whatever Biden or the Democrats want. Anyway, so much of what we see in politics today, especially on the Trump cult side of things, is, is not so much political as it is psychological. There are psychological reasons why Republicans and these Trump cultists do and say the things they do and say. It's much more explicable by group psychology than it is by politics. And I'm telling you, the whole vaccine debate is another example of that. Now, since we're on this um, Trump cult topic and um, how you get ahead in Trump cult politics today... Let's uh, let's talk about some of the stupid things Republicans say. Here is a clip you might have seen this from uh, Larry Elder talking to Candace Owens. Now, the fact that someone like Candace Owens is a prominent voice of influence uh, among Republicans just tells you how stupid most Republicans are. I mean, this this one this woman is a, like a ridiculous caricature of a, a crazy Republican. And she is, uh, you know, an intellectual lightweight if ever there was one. Anyway, so Larry Elder is talking to her on her show. I guess she has a show. 
Uh, of course, she has a show. Why not? You don't have to be smart to have a show. And the dumber you are, and the more you just repeat nonsense that the cult wants to hear, the more successful you will be. That's why my show's never going to get very far, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. I'm never going to have a, a show that is as successful as Candace Owens' show. There's, there's just simply no way. Anyway, Larry Elders went, uh, you know, Larry Elders is, is running for governor in this uh, California recall effort. And he went on with Candace Owens, and they were talking about slavery. So let's listen to a bit of that. Right behind them. By, by the way, when you mentioned that uh, the UK was ahead of us, they were. Do you know that the slave owners were compensated? After they lost their quote-unquote property, the government compensated slave owners. I didn't know that. Yeah, and so when people talk about repar reparations, do they really want to have that conversation? Because, like it or not, slavery was legal. And so their property, their legal property, was taken away from them after the after the Civil War. So uh, you could make an argument that the people that are owed reparations, and not only just black people, but also the people whose, quote, property, close quote, was taken away after after the end of the Civil War. Right. All right. Uh, now, here's my point in this. This guy is actually running to be governor of California. And while he's obviously correct that slaves at the time were considered the personal property of the slave owners, is this really smart politics? I mean, is this really in 2021 the kind of political points you want to make if you're a sane political party? You really want to go out in public and advocate that slave own the descendants of slave owners should somehow be compensated for the loss of their slaves? What in fresh hell is that? And I don't give a damn that the law at the time considered slaves to be personal property of the slave owners. So freaking what? It was an evil institution that a human being would be the considered the property of another. And now in 2021, we're going to argue that, well, if you want to bring up topics of slavery, and look, I am not... Um, siding with those who want to bring, who keep bringing up slavery. Look, the only reason we're bringing this up is to divide people to begin with anyway. All right. Yes, we need to talk about slavery so that people understand history. But the, that's not the reason people keep bringing it up all the time. People on the left. It's, it's to advance a political agenda. But I think it is idiotic in the extreme uh, to respond to that by arguing, well, hey, if you're gonna bring you're gonna bring up reparations for slaves, the descendants of slaves, then we should talk about uh, reparations for the lost property, the lost slaves of the slaveholders. I mean, that is absurd. Look, we don't even do that now in the law. Okay, so say for example, let's take marijuana, right? Marijuana is being decriminalized all over the place, okay? And there's some states where it's completely decriminalized and even legal. So say some somebody in one of those states just loves their weed and has like a huge stash of this stuff, right? Well, what if um, politicians in that state decide to make it illegal again? So now you have property that you acquired legally at the time and now it's illegal is the government going to compensate you for the loss of your weed? No. No, of course they're not going to. Hey, and I'll give you... Should I should have led with this example because it just popped in my mind. But I'll give you another example. Um, you know, that the Trump cult goes right over their heads, right? Um, so they one of the things the Trump cult does is they, they create all these myths about Donald Trump. They lie about him, you know. Uh, one of the myths is that he is the greatest Second Amendment president ever. Well, that's, uh, you know, utter bullshit. He signed more gun control legislation than Barack Obama did. You know, this is the guy who said he wants to go uh, get the guns first and go through due process later. I mean, that violates so, so many uh, parts of the Constitution. I mean, due process, Second Amendment. I mean, and this is their Second Amendment savior. And another thing Donald Trump did with respect to guns was he banned bump stocks by executive order, violating not only separation of powers, but you can make an argument that it violated the Second Amendment, but it certainly violated separation of powers. But what did it also do? It made into a criminal with the stroke of Donald Trump's pen anyone who possessed a bump stock. Now, up until Donald Trump 
issued his unconstitutional mandate, suddenly Trump cults all are, are all opposed to executive orders and mandates, right? When Donald Trump issued his unconstitutional, clearly unconstitutional, and it's clearly not so much because of the Second Amendment issue, that's debatable because a bump stock isn't in and of itself a firearm. So you can you can have a legitimate debate whether or not that violated the Second Amendment, but it absolutely violated separation of powers because only Congress can change law. And banning bump stocks, which were not previously illegal, that was a change in the law. And only Congress has authority to change the law. But dictator Trump had no problem with uh, changing, to, changing the substantive criminal law with the stroke of a pen, violating separation of powers, violating the Constitution. And when he did that, he turned all those people who had legally purchased bump stocks into criminals who could be sentenced to prison, I believe it was for up to 10 years, if they are caught with a bump stock. And none of those people were being compensated for the loss of their property, which they acquired legally at the time. And bump stocks are not immoral and evil in and of themselves, right? They may be illegal, but they're not inherently immoral or evil as slavery was. And we are going to make, you know, Larry Elder a leading contender to be governor of the state of California is going to be out there in public making this ridiculous argument as a way, I guess, as a way to own the libs. Because this is how we debate now. It, well, not we. I'm not part of these people. But this is how these Trump cultists debate. Everything is about owning the libs. So if the lib has an argument about reparations. Well, uh, if you really want to talk about reparations, you better, we better talk about compensating slave owners for the loss of their slaves. That was their personal property. I mean, this is just asinine politics. But why would he say something like that? Because he knows who the Trump cult is. And this is an owning the libs kind of a statement. This is the kind of garbage that sells. The problem with this is that it's so tone deaf. Do you think that that's going to go over well with a majority of Americans? Now, it will certainly go over well with a majority of the Trump cult, because this is the kind of crap, um, you know, that the Trump, the Trump cult loves. But do a majority of Americans agree with this kind of crap? Of course not. But the Trump cult lives in an information bubble. So the kind of people who are listening to Candace Owens on her podcast talking with, oh, and I'm just noticing now, I'm looking at this video of Candace Owens, and it says the Candace Owens show in the bottom left-hand corner, and then it says Prager U in the bottom right-hand corner. So I'm guessing from this that this is a, a Prager U affiliated production. <laughs> so that makes it even worse. Um, so anyways, so someone who would be listening, watching the Candace Owen podcast I guarantee you, these people live in a complete information bubble. These people spend all day in right-wing Trump cult media where everybody agrees with this kind of crap. And because they spend every day immersed in this stuff, you know, maybe, you know, they'll watch Fox News and then Candace Owens, Dan Bongino, all of these kind of people. And they'll probably spend a lot of time on social media where they follow and are followed by only fellow Trump cultists. And so this is just positively reinforced. This is normal. This is what everybody thinks. And so they get this warped view of reality where they think that this kind of garbage resonates with most people. And it's only a, a, sl a thin slice of left-wing progressives who would disagree with this. And it's not just this slavery comment, but it's everything. It's all the kind of crazy stuff they believe. Now to us normal people, when they say this crazy crap, you know, when they start, you know, when they start buying out ivermectin from feed stores, um, and start self-medicating with livestock dewormer. Yes. And I know ivermectin is an FDA approved drug for certain things, but it's not FDA approved for COVID. And it's certainly not FDA approved, uh, in, in the form 
where you buy it at a feed store. You know, there is ivermectin for human use for certain things. And then there's ivermectin in different dosage and all of that uh, that you buy from feed store to get the friggin' horses. It's, it's not exactly the same thing just because it has uh, the active ingredient drug ivermectin in it. Anyway, so, but this is the kind of thing. So that they'll, everyone they know you know, believes that ivermectin is a cure. And before that, it was hydroxychloroquine. Don't hear about that anymore, right? But this just shows you, it, it. whatever it is, the crazy of the day, it spreads like wild, wildfire among these people. And I guarantee you, whatever craziness it, it, is, it is today, and it'll be something tomorrow. And to, next week, it'll be something else. In fact, by next week, we've probably gone through 15 other crazy conspiracies. And they all believe every word of all of it. And why? Because everyone they follow and everyone who follows them all live in the same information bubble. So in their world, the election was stolen. Even though there's absolutely no proof that the election was stolen, it was stolen. Why? Well, because Pillow Guy said so. And because uh, Sidney Powell and her Kraken said so. And Lynn Wood, Lynn Wood said so. Doesn't matter the fact that they had no evidence that they lost every single court case. And here's another thing, just while I'm on, on this topic. Why did all of these people move to dismiss the lawsuits against them um, when Dominion uh, sued them for defamation? You know, why did, did Sidney Powell and, and the pillow guy so desperately try to have those lawsuits thrown out of court? They should have been happy to have those lawsuits filed against them. Because they have said all along that we never got our day in court. We were never allowed to present our evidence. Well, they are being sued for claiming this big conspiracy that Dominion rigged the election. And, the, and I mean, this is central to their lie of a stolen election. Well, if they believe that the election was stolen and that Dominion helped steal the election, then they should welcome being sued because truth is a defense to defamation. So it would be a legal defense if, if, if Dominion is suing them for them claiming that Dominion rigged the election, then it is a legal defense to prove that Dominion actually did help rig the election. And and they could not have evidence of that stolen election uh, be suppressed by the court because it's an affirmative defense. They would be entitled to offer their evidence that the election was stolen. And they should welcome that because that is exactly what they have been complaining for, for all these months, that we were never allowed to present our evidence in a court of law. Well, this would be the perfect opportunity. This being sued by Dominion is the perfect opportunity because you are entitled by law to present your evidence of a stolen election as a valid affirmative defense to the defamation charges. So why do they want those charges dismissed or those lawsuits dismissed? Because they're full of shit. They know they're full of shit. This was all a huge lie. But among the Trump cult who listen to people like Candace Owens and who believe all these c crazy conspiracy theories and are going to their local Agway to buy ivermectin uh, for horses so they can go home and self-medicate with horse dewormer uh, while they listen to Candace Owens and shit themselves for three days. This is why these people believe all of this nonsense. Because they live in a complete information bubble. They live in a, a world of information that is completely divorced from reality. In their world, all these crazy conspiracies are true. Everyone knows that the election was stolen. No evidence in the real world, but they all believe it as an article of faith. And in fact, I have an article right here. A new poll finds that a majority of Republicans think that believing Donald Trump won in 2020 is an important tenet for being a Republican. And the number is 59%. 59% of Republicans believe that it is basically a requirement to be a Republican that you believe that the 2020 election was stolen and that Donald Trump really won the election. Insane. Absolutely insane. This is a party completely divorced from reality. And how do you get to a number like that? 59% say that you have to believe in the big lie in order to be a Republican. 
And that's not 59% of Republicans believe the election was stolen. It's probably much higher than that. That's just Republicans who say that in order to be a Republican, you have to believe the big lie. I'm sure there's plenty of them who believe the big lie themselves, but who also say, well, you don't necessarily have to believe that the election was stolen. You could still be a Republican, but I believe the election was stolen. So you know damn well it's higher than 59% who actually believe the election was stolen, even after this much time. This much time. Oh, and by the way, Oh, I need to find this clip. I don't have it. Maybe if I can find it, I'll I'll, I'll play it. But Trump was just on uh, some radio show. Wow. I, I think he was on Newsmax or something. I don't remember. Point is, it was just in the last few days. And he was still out there saying that because of these, these phony audits uh, like going on in Arizona, that he thinks he's going to be reinstated as president. He thinks these audits are going to reverse the election and he is going to be reinstated as president. Guys, this is batshit insanity. Okay, just as a practical matter, it's impossible. It's impossible. There is no legal or constitutional way for Donald Trump to be reinstated as president. Even if these audits were real audits, And even if they came back and concluded that Donald Trump really won the election, there is still no way that Donald Trump will be reinstated as president because there is no reinstatement provision of any kind. You cannot undo the election. The only way, I mean, once the the electoral votes are accepted by Congress and counted and and, uh, the, the winner announced in Congress in January, it's over. There's, there's simply nothing that can be done. And especially after uh, the president is inaugurated. You cannot, there is no way. You cannot file a lawsuit. There is nothing Congress can do. Even if every member of Congress was convinced that the election was stolen. And even if there is 100% unanimity among Republicans and Democrats in Congress that the election was stolen and they want to, they want to yank Biden out of office and reinstate Trump, they can't do it. There's nothing they can do. They have no power to do it. It's over. But how many in the Trump cult don't realize that? How many in the Trump cult uh, don't believe? They believe that Trump can be reinstated, that there's some legal or constitutional way for that to happen. There isn't. You can't do it through the courts. You can't do it through Congress. Congress. It is impossible. But not only do they believe that it's legally possible to do it, they actually expect him to be reinstated. They expect that the the cyber ninjas in Arizona are going to overturn the election. And then that result is going to cause Georgia to overturn their election results and blah, blah, blah. blah. They believe this is going to happen and that Trump will be reinstated. You know, every time they tell us, you know, pillow guy comes and says, it's, oh, it's going to be by this date. You know, that date comes and goes and, and it doesn't happen. Well, then they just announce another date on and on and on and on and on and on and on without end. And these morons keep believing it. They were convinced that uh, Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, they were going to have the the election results thrown out before the the, the Congress met to count the Electoral College votes. When that didn't happen, oh, well, we'll we'll prove it afterwards. Uh, And and that hasn't happened. And and those lawyers have now been reprimanded and faced dis... I mean, Rudy Giuliani already has been suspended from practicing law. He's not been outright disbarred yet, but he's been at least temporarily suspended. Sidney Powell's been sanctioned. She's being referred to her state disciplinary committee for possible disbarment proceedings. None of that matters to these people. They still believe these lunatics. Lynn Wood, I just saw every other day I see some new video clip of this lunatic doing something crazy. I just saw a video of him this morning where he's filming himself as he calls a hospital to threaten them with murder charges. Uh, he announces, I'm a lawyer, I'm, a, I'm an attorney, Lynn Wood, and he's threatening them with murder charges if uh, they don't release some patient immediately and give them ivermectin or something. I don't know, some crazy crap. Th- these are the people that, the, that these Trump cultists believe. I mean, this is just the level of crazy. And this is the level of crazy that they are immersed in 24 hours a day. And they don't get their information from anywhere else except these lunatics. And let me tell you, I need to wrap this up here. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to get to some of this other stuff I wanted to. So I'll put that on the stack for tomorrow. Um, but let me tell you, 
there this Republican Party is becoming increasing increasingly unhinged, increasingly unhinged from reality. Now, the Trump cult, unfortunately, is huge. And keep in mind, I want to continue to say this so people understand my meaning here. I know that Trump supporters, and this is why I do not call myself a conservative anymore, Trump supporters are referred to as being conservatives. They're not. Trump is not a conservative. This is not a conservative movement. Not in any way as that term has traditionally been used. Not in the way that I certainly meant it when I have in the past called my called myself a conservative. I'm still the same person. But the meaning of that word has changed. And so I can't really call myself conservative anymore because conser- the conservative label is attached now to these lunatics and I have nothing in common with these, these freaks. Anyway, these people are becoming increasingly unhinged and nuts. They believe ever wilder and wilder things. And because this movement, this Trump cult movement, is not really a political movement based on ideas. It's a psychological, it's a group psychological phenomenon. That's what it is. That's what you have to realize. This is not based in 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 principle. It's not based on an approach to governance. It's not based on issues. It is a psychological phenomenon at this point. And part of that... Um, this, this group psychology is you have to believe what everybody else in the group believes. And the group is, is, is this Trump cult and, and these information bubbles in which they live. And if you want to be a member of, in good standing of the group, and, and being a member of the group is a, a powerful human psychological phenomenon. But if you want to be a member, and we, and we all uh, are influenced by that. Okay, it's it's hardwired in us to want to fit in and be part of the group. It goes, you know, there's an evolutionary basis for that. There was safety in numbers. You you did not want to be excluded from the group. If you were kicked out of the, out of the group as an early human, you almost certainly were not going to survive. So we were hardwired psychologically to want to be part of the group so that we stay within the group so that we live and pass on our genes and, and blah, blah, blah. So there's an evolutionary component to this, and it's hardwired. But in order to be a part of this group, the Trump cult, in order to be a member of that group, you have to believe all this craziness. You have to believe... Uh, Everything that they believe, and they believe, of course, that the election was stolen, but they believe so much other crazy bullshit, and there's something new every single day. And so whatever the latest bit of craziness is accepted by the Trump cult, you have to accept it. You have to believe it, or else you're not a member in good standing of the group. So there is a psychological compulsion For these people to believe every single batshit crazy conspiracy or bit of information that's wrong, uh, whatever it is, they have to believe it. And because of social media, these things get out and around almost instantaneously. So let's take COVID, right? You know, it used to be that everyone in the Trump cult believed that hydroxychloroquine was the magic cure to COVID. Everyone believed that as an article of faith. And it was all just a big government conspiracy to prevent us from taking hydroxychloroquine um, and yada, yada, yada. All right, we don't hear much about hydroxychloroquine anymore. Now it's ivermectin. And everybody in the Trump cult just knows, just knows as as an article of faith that ivermectin is a magic cure for COVID, right? Well, tomorrow it could be something else. You know, maybe Donald Trump goes on Steve Bannon's show, or maybe he goes and talks to um, um, Candace Owens, or he calls into Sean Hannity, and he says that, well, some people, some respected scientists are saying that the cure that the government doesn't want you to know about, the cure for COVID, is engine degreaser. Suddenly, within 24 hours, every Trump cult in the country is going to be running into AutoZone, and shoving engine degreaser up their asses. This is how it works. And this is how stupid these people are. And I only say that partly in jest. Because I think a bunch of them would do it. That's how nuts these freaking people are. 
But this, again, this is not a product of thought. The Trump cult, what you see the Trump cult say, what you see the Trump cult do, this doesn't have to do with rational thought. This doesn't have to do with informed thought. This has to do with group psychology and just mindlessly believing, not even questioning, believing as an article of faith, whatever makes the rounds in the information bubble in which they live. And by the way, that's why all the, the, the figureheads or the media figures inside the Trump cult information bubble, they all say the exact same thing. They all agree. And isn't it funny how all these people, they're, they're experts in everything. They're all experts in virology. They're all like experts in, uh, you know, all of these various drugs. Everyone's an ivermectin expert now. Before that, they were all hydroxychloroquine experts. They're experts on everything. They're, they're experts on the, the science of vaccines themselves. They're experts in messenger ribonucleic acid. They're, they're experts in everything. They're certainly all experts in constitutional law, as we know. Uh, they're experts in freaking everything. And all of these, these Trump cult mouthpieces... They all say the same thing. You ever notice that? They never differ. So if you go to Sean Hannity or you go to Dan Bon Idiot or you go to Candace Owens or you go to any of them, any of them, they all say the exact same thing because they're all part of the Trump cult. And to be in the group, they have to say the same thing because they will be thrown out of the group just as fast as a rank and file member of the group. So they all say the same thing. They all have the exact same take on the election. Everybody knows it was stolen. They have the exact same take on these uh, vaccine mandates. Oh, they're just unconstitutional. There's no, there's no nuance. There's no serious discussion of the constitutionality of it. Uh, There's nothing. It's just blanket statements of what the Trump cult wants to hear. You know, hydroxychloroquine is a cure-all. Ivermectin is a cure-all. Uh, Mandates are unconstitutional. The election was stolen. Uh, Dominion rigged the election. And on and on and on and on and freaking on. There's no end to it. And they all say the exact same thing. And they will all say the exact same thing about whatever it is tomorrow. There will be no serious discussion. There will be no dissent. Whatever crazy takes root inside the Trump cult information bubble Everyone will believe it as an article of faith and every talk show host and Fox News, they all repeat the exact same thing. Everyone will get on the same page. Everyone will toe the line. Everyone will say what the Trump cult wants to hear, what's the only accepted thing to say on the subject within the Trump cult. They will all get online and say it because if they don't, they'll be outcast by the Trump cult and destroyed. That is group psychology. That is what is at work with the Trump cult. That is what we're seeing. And it's sick and it's scary because it is very, very dangerous. And we've seen this throughout history over and over again. When group psychology and politics merge, and there's always some dynamic of group psychology and work at work within the realm of politics, but when group psychology and the psychology of the cult can, takes over a political party, takes over a political movement, that can lead to very dangerous places. Group psychology is what explains what happened in the 1930s in Germany. That's how something like that can happen, because of the group psychology involved. Over and over again, we've seen this through history. This is scary shit. And what should scare you is the level of crazy that these people inside the Trump cult will believe. How much crazy they will accept. And they will believe without question. Okay? Today, they're buying ivermectin uh, from Tractor Supply and shoving it up their ass. Or however you take (laughs) ivermectin. Tomorrow, they might be running AutoZone to buy engine degreaser to shove up their asses. All right? That's just crazy. And that's not going to be the downfall of the country. But anybody stupid enough to be injecting themselves with horse dewormer is stupid enough to follow the cult wherever it goes. And we already got a small glimpse of what that could look like. And it's called January 6th. All right? That's, That's the kind of political thing this leads to. 
When you believe the lie that the election was stolen and you believe the lie that the vice president of the United States has authority to throw out electoral votes and when you're being egged on by the president of the United States, your cult leader, to attack the Capitol in a last ditch effort to prevent Congress from certifying the election that your cult leader lost. That's just a small glimpse of where this could go. It can get a hell of a lot worse than that. And a small group of, of passionately committed crazy people inspired by disinformation and lies by crazy conspiracy theories that they believe as an article of faith because it's believed inside their information bubbles. A small group, a relatively small group of people can do a hell of a lot of damage. And the psychology involved in this Trump cult phenomenon should scare every damn one of you because of what this could lead to. And while we can all have some fun mocking these idiots who will flock to Tractor Supply Company to buy horse dewormer because it's, been, it's become an article of faith that they all believe unquestioningly inside their Trump cult media bubbles that it's some cure-all for COVID. You know, we, can, we can mock those idiots. But the same psychology that leads people to believe stupid crap like that is the same psychology at work that leads them to believe that the election was stolen, that the vice president, that we have to attack the Capitol, and on and on and on. And that could lead them to do some seriously dangerous things. The problem with this is the Trump cult is not a small cult. We're talking about tens of millions of people. And when there are that many people in this country who are so unhinged and divorced from reality and are so mindlessly committed to the cult, there really is no telling how far these lunatics could go in service of the cult. And that should concern everybody. Well, that's going to do it for me today. I thank you so much for listening. And if you would, it would be greatly appreciated if you could do everything you can to help promote this show, help keep it going. I recommend it to family and friends and anyone you think who would, uh, who would be interested in it. I would greatly appreciate that. So until next time, thank you so much for listening. And I'll talk to you again soon.